Thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Jason Supis, joined by Tammy Majerik, both community education specialists for UC Agriculture and Natural Resources here in Orange County. This is the first installment in our new series, Orange County Science and Service Spotlight. Spotlight serves uh, to educate and inform Orange County residents and adjacent communities as to how UC Ag and Natural Resources is working in the background to better the lives of all Californians. We'll take uh, a week each month, uh, now through December, to take a deep dive and highlight research programs serving the needs of Orange County, such as water resources, urban forestry, human wildlife interactions, and nutrition. We thought before we looked at these programs, we should really start first by focusing on the headquarters, uh, where these and many other amazing projects and programs call home, and that's here at UC South Coast Research and Extension Center. To help us tell the story of this unique facility and the work done uh, here, we've invited facility director, Dr. Darren Haver. Darren currently serves as a water resources advisor, county director for the University of California Cooperative Extension in Orange County, center director of South Coast Research, and assistant vice provost director of research and extension center system since 2018. His research and extension efforts focus on protecting local water resources and water quality through pollutant source identification and movement, ID and implementation of pollutant mitigation management methods and practices, and reduced water consumption in agricultural, urban, and natural environments. He earned his Bachelor of Science degree from Cal Poly Pomona and his PhD from UC Riverside. Uh, Darren, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for the chance to speak with you. Sure. Uh, UC South Coast is such a unique place. I've never really seen anything like it before. Uh, I know I'm guilty, guilty of referring it uh, to it occasionally as the farm, uh, but it's not really a farm in the, the conventional sense. Can you tell us a little bit more about this facility? Uh, that's very true, Jason. It's not the conventional farm. South Coast Research and Extension Center was built in uh, 1956. Uh, the original property belonged to the Irvine Ranch or Irvine Company. Uh, they sold this property, the 200 acres, to UC. And we turned this into uh, basically what we consider to be an outdoor laboratory for researchers to bring their research from the bench on campus out into the field in a somewhat controlled environment um, compared to actually taking it out into the real world. This gives them the opportunity to get an idea of how is it gonna work out and work out any kinks and actually give them another opportunity to get input from the end user. The photo you're looking at right now are the, is the overview of South Coast Research and Extension Center. And you can see that it's uh, very, very close to an urban neighborhood. When it was built in 1956, even then they knew the area would be built up and become an urbanized area. And they felt that they would not only work on agricultural projects, but actually start working on issues that would impact urban environments later in the future. And we are in that situation at this point. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the, uh, the research projects here. Um, Sure. I know there's nine of these research extension centers throughout California. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, you can see on the map that our research and extension center system consists of nine um, locations all the way from the Oregon border all the way south to uh, the Mexican American border. Um, the research and extension centers are located in different environments and that allows a researcher to not only do work in one particular climate that they want to do their work in, but also to do a project in multiple locations, um, which is going to be in really important in the near future when we start looking at more climate change type impacts. Um, a project could be done along uh, the border of Mexico and then also be done up in Intermountain. Um, and that provides a lot of unique opportunity for research in California that you don't see anywhere else in, in the nation. Uh, roughly, we have about 25 to 30 projects uh, led by researchers from UC, mainly. Um, that is our bread and butter and how we provide that service to researchers by providing labor, we collect data, we actually maintain the plants, uh, you know, that may be weeding, uh, watering, um, whatever is asked of us uh, as from the researchers, we provide that service to them. You talk about some of the, uh, the higher profile projects to come out of the REC. Um, has there been any new varieties or, or management practices developed here? 
Yeah, originally, the Research and Extension Center, South Coast, was put in place to work on a couple large projects, uh, one of them being the strawberry breeding program, uh, as well as a little bit later on, the um, avocado rootstock and scion programs. So both of those have yielded tremendous amount of uh, patented varieties of, of both um, mainly with strawberries, but there have also been a couple of avocados that have been released as well as extensive roots, avocado rootstock. Um, the avocado rootstock was developed in order to combat a common disease in the soil, a root rot disease. Uh, and UC has led the way in finding rootstock that are resistant and providing those to growers in California as well as around the world where avocados are grown. We also have a number of germplasm collections. You're seeing a photo of persimmon as well as uh, cherimoya and that and citrus. And that allows us to have plant material here that can be used later for um, research projects if uh, specific genetic material is needed. And that something just popped up in the news here recently is uh, finding resistance uh, to the uh, Wong Long Bing citrus greening disease. Uh, found among uh, the Australian finger lime, is that correct? Exactly, and that's a perfect example of where having that genetic material available for researchers to use uh, yielded something very positive, hopefully that will be um, able to be put into the genetic material for our citrus and save our industries. Fascinating. Uh, South Coast Rex uh, main function is as a research facility. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the extension efforts um, and public programs uh, that are available? Absolutely. So when the research centers, as I mentioned earlier, were built, uh, they were called field stations. And field stations were outdoor laboratories, mainly focused on solely on conducting research in a controlled environment. Um, over the years, uh, obviously, we had extension type activities or educational activities, but we've decided that we're going to expand those beyond what we normally would. And so the name change from field station to research and extension centers helped us do that in the mid-90s. Uh, at South Coast Research and Extension Center, we have a number of uh, outreach both to youth and to adults, and we bring in partnerships uh, in the community to help us deliver that. So we might partner with uh, local schools, we might partner with local chefs, uh, breweries, uh, whoever would be a uh, benefit from having that information and also educating people and getting them the idea and the concepts behind why food is important and how research and science uh, yields better varieties yields uh, ability to control diseases, uh, everything that we need and deal with that you may encounter in your own backyard garden when you actually try to grow your own food. You, you learn very quickly how difficult that can be. Sure. Um, the youth is focusing on educating them on agricultural in general and getting their hands dirty. Uh, many activities that we have are uh, in collaboration with the Orange County Farm Bureau and a presidential chair uh, ag and education endowment that was put in place. And that's really to make sure that urban youth, even if they're not even interested in agriculture, really understand where their food comes from. Absolutely, thank you. Uh, what's your vision for South Coast Rec? Uh, where do you see this facility going in the next five to 10 years? So I think South Coast will always provide that role of um, agricultural research. We still have plenty of interest from the original ag campuses in the UC system, so Berkeley, Davis, and Riverside, as well as new campuses within the system that are working on agricultural issues. That will always be some type of research here related to agriculture. Um, but one of the things that being in an urban area that we want to focus on is looking at how we live in an urban area and how science can improve that whole process. So we're in the early stages of developing what we're calling at this point the hub for urban living. And the hub for urban living will focus on all those issues that we deal with living in an urban area that we have particular expertise in, whether it be expertise that we gain from agricultural information or natural resource. So for example, we could target looking at green waste. How do we make sure that we reduce green waste going into landfills? Uh, we can target looking at food waste. What do we do with food waste that's generated in highly concentrated urban areas? We can look at how do we control pests? How do we deal and live with wildlife that is we've encroached on and now we have to figure out how to live safely with them? So all of those topics require, they're, they're complex, they have multiple issues related to them, and they require scientists and communities to come together to solve them. And I think the hub for urban living is going to be one of the locations that is known in California, nationally, and hopefully around the world as the place where you get information on how to live more sustainably in an urban environment. Uh, we hope to begin developing that idea and fleshing it out a little bit more over the next year. 
Well, Darren, uh, thank you so much for joining us today and telling the story of South Coast Rec. Um, You're very welcome. Thank you. If anybody uh, listening uh, or watching would like more information about South Coast Research and Extension Center, we have our website up here, uh, screc.ucanr.edu for the website. Uh, you can find us at facebook.com forward slash UC South Coast and also on Instagram and Twitter uh, at the handle at UC South Coast. Darren, Tammy, uh, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and I'll see you soon. Thank you.